afternoon, everyone. Um, Patrick Fitzgerald is my name. I've just finished one presentation. I've been thrown into another, and I guess you're all waiting to get to the bar, um, even if the bar is a socially distanced uh, kitchen or something like that. Um, I'm here to talk about Firebird, which is something I discovered many years ago. Um, and it's something that I discovered just as you do, just wandering around your local hard disk and discover it's installed on this machine that, that should be running Linux and very controlled uh, environment. And what's it doing there? Well, it turns out it well, it says it's probably already installed. Actually, I'm running Tumbleweed and it's definitely not installed. And I called Doug and said, I've got a problem. I, it's been removed from the repo, but it's still in Leap. So it might have already been installed. Um, there might be a LibreOffice update removing it. I'm not sure, but it's a great database. Um, but what can you do with it? And why do you care? So very briefly, we're going to go into what a database is. Uh, what's in a base, which is actually its predecessor, which is not predecessor so much as the original source code that was open sourced. Um, and why is it so good? Um, and why we use it, uh, or why we did use it, um, and why it's a good tool to have in a toolbox. Um, so uh, I'm Patrick Fitzgerald, as I said, I've been a programmer for ever. Um, I spent eight years working in film and television. Um, in the meantime, whilst I was doing that, because there's lots of spare time if you're working in television and film, um, in Australia at least, which is where I'm from, um, uh, I did some, a whole lot of programming um, and a friend of mine said I was creative in all directions. I'm not sure what that means, if it was an insult or a compliment, I'm still trying to work that out. Um, but, you know, been into Linux for at least 20 years now, um, and built an open source cloud and in 2010, uh, still running in, in two data or in a number of data centers in London and Zurich uh, for large financial customers. Um, but I'd get shot if I told you who they were. Um, I've been in London for a long time, um, but now I'm a Brexit refugee uh, and currently residing in Germany and loving it. Um, and I'm a survivor of many things, including a cardiac arrest two years ago um, at this very conference. Um, so enough about me. What do you think about me? Are you joking? So let's just go back to that slide because I've just gone a little bit too far. So what's Interbase? <clears throat> now, I came across it uh, when I was running a, a company called uh, Oceanware Digital, um, which is a client service company, so working on people's systems. Um, and we had to write a system um, to track engineer work time um, and at that point I knew a lot about uh, uh, Python uh, sorry uh, Pascal and object Pascal so Delphi was the tool of choice and it came with something called Interbase and I looked up I read up about it and it seemed to be well that's um it's it's got a long history it's it's solid it's de dependable it's got all the things you want in an enterprise database but it's got a three meg binary and the download is eight meg. Um, it's almost true, too good to be true. It's also, it's true multi architecture. It runs on everything, including Android. Um, and uh, of course, the, the big thing was it was free with Delphi Enterprise. So that's what we went for. Um, it's got an, a surprising history. Um, it was in one of the early embedded databases uh, and the theory is, or the, the rumor is, that it was originally developed for targeting systems of the M1 tank. Um, whether or not that's true, but one of the things that they had to assure the, the, the Department of Defense of is that regardless of what happened, if the system went down, it'll come straight back up with no, uh, with no corruption. Um, and based on that initial requirement is kind of where a whole lot of the different uh, des design decisions were made um, and so forth and so, and therefore it's highly reliable um, uh, it's compact as well um, 
it sits it, the database sits in a, in a, in a single file um, and uh, is accessed by a connection string uh, which we'll see which you'll see shortly um, the high reliability is interesting because it it meant that um, I mean, it's not that we certainly weren't building systems for the N1 tank or any tank for that matter, um, but we were doing early experiments with um, iSCSI uh, and other network uh, things and NFS and sharing stuff and doing all sorts of interesting things, especially when we started building the, the, uh, the cloud environment. And we found that if there was some sort of interrupt, interruption to the network flow, for example, for the virtual machine that's being shared across an NFS share. Um, things like MySQL. Uh, MySQL was a, a pretty bad. Uh, it could not, it, it would have to do a massive recovery on it. On the same infrastructure, the same system running on a Windows system um, with with Firebase, uh, so with Firebird um, as the as the uh, the database system, we never and still never have touch wood had a corruption of the database, um, and it was being used very very actively um, for our system. Um, so what's Firebird? Well, there's what they call the year two thousand incident, which was um, they were going to take they're planning to take it public, and they're going to open source the the code and it was all you know linux was just coming on on stream and it's becoming more and more popular um lots of internet pack uh, companies were being funded and and then suddenly it the bubble burst and a whole lot of companies lost a lot of money and of course year 2000 uh, was uh, happening right then which was something that a lot of a lot of money had been poured into um into companies to make sure that the that the come the year two thousand, um, their systems would not, for example, end up resetting back to zero because they've got a two digit date field um, for when it comes to the year. So, um, and that was a massive problem. And what's funny is when people talk about it, there's lots of people who don't know that that was a big issue, and it was. Um, so. They were so the the comp in in prize of the company um, uh, which is owned by Borland I think and they they're gonna they're gonna take it public um, and they they briefly open sourced it before all this stuff in the year two thousand happened uh, which meant that they just realised it wasn't a good time to open sort of to um, to go public so they pulled the the floating of the business and they realised the open source code was out there already on the internet. So they closed it, they closed it off, but someone had already grabbed it with the look, with the open source license and they started building Firebird uh, from the original source. And a lot of the original developers, I think, from, from Interbase, Interbase is the, is the corporation um, that built it, uh, they, they joined and they're still part of the, the, uh, the team that's making it. Um, so, so what is it good at? Um, anything that doesn't need uh, this memory restricted. Anything, any system that you need to have a, 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 a maintenance-free uh, database or data store. Um, um, so that could be data system, data collection systems running in Raspberry Pis or smaller smaller devices. Um, that are unattended and sitting in someone's roof or something like that, just getting getting information and then pumping up to the internet. Um, Multi-user systems um, that just Postgres or My, MySQL or M, MSQL is complete overkill. Um, Multi-user systems is is not really where SQL like shines. A lot of people, I'm sure that I'm making a lot of people. Uh, very irritated by saying that, but it's not really it when you write when it writes to the database file, it block does a block, so you can't actually have multiple records being written at the same time by different service by different service or processes. Um, um, and because of the way it writes the file, 
Um, if you're in a situation where you've got unpredictable power or un unpredictable uh, cert, um, you know, system or something like that, it's like I said, you know, we've had, we've, we've worked, we've used this system for almost 20 years with, with various uh, infrastructural environments with various problems and we have never had a corruption. Um, very good for something like a kiosk, which is probably better uh, better suited by SQL for SQL Lite. But it also means that if you're doing something in 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 Firebird, you can scale. You can scale it. You can have multiple connections, multiple client systems talking to the same database, um, and therefore establish the social so-called um, single source of the truth. Um, <clears throat> So that's uh, when. So that's that's you know that's a big thing for for us, um, not having multiple uh, multiple databases saying multiple multiple different things about customers or or their systems or it's, it, we put it all in one database and that and everything links into that. Um, and of course, an embedded and an edge devices size does matter. Um, and unfortunately, I can't scale this slide properly but it's not because of my lack of ability but it's because the different size between between sql light firebird and mysql or maria um, db is so dramatic that it's it, it, you know it's un unbelievable I, I was actually completely surprised when i was doing the preparation for this slide um, because i didn't realize a firebird was still that small and that B, my sequel is that large. Um, and uh, I will do a bit of a brief uh, demonstration on Django. And even the down, the RPM for Django is about 10 meg. Um, so if you're doing something and building something that will talk to, to uh, you know, lightweight systems, um, when your client, the client access system, if it's uh, something like Django, you're talking about 10 meg download, and the database is going to be uh, eight, well, a lot, a lot more than that. Um, what's that? Uh, 80 times larger, <laughs> which is kind of silly. Um, and the thing is about code: um, the more lines of code there are, there's a greater opportunity for failure, or greater opportunity for for errors. And one of the best things about Firebird is it's so, I mean, it's version four has just been released. Um, and they keep on gradually introducing different features, but the code is rock solid. And you're not going to have some sort of failure because of someone you know, has just introduced something to the, to the code. Um, so our use case was, um, and still is uh, iLayer's job tracking system. It was originally started with the previous company, which was called OceanWare Digital. Um, as I said, designed around 1998, um, and Delphine Interface were used. Um, we did two clients, and, and one of them was a web-based uh, system for for the client uh, for the engineers to use um, when they're on client sites. Because of course, back then, being being uh, showing my age, but back then it was it was the, all the rage for companies to start in, installing um, the internet and getting access and giving giving people the, the ability to browse the very few websites that were available um, but even then it was booming um, so and and the basis of that was we would have our engineers would be on online anyway so we did we decided instead of making it a a a thick client or, or, or a fat client that would be installed on machines on each client site we just thought let's make it a web web page and that's what we did and there's one other um client there was a couple of other clients in uh, developed as well um but one of the, the most important one was a desktop windows client written in delphi as well uh that injected would take all the all the invi invoices and all the time that's tracked with word tracking time on a uh, much like a, a legal company does. So you, you start talking to your lawyer, he's going to click a 
click a button or, or I think before start a stopwatch, you know, take the time and charge it in six minute increments. We thought that was a good idea. Um, customers didn't necessarily, but there you go. Um, and so we that would get in, injected into the system via the web page, and then we'd do all sorts of uh, things, like operations on that data, depending on on how many um, what the what client they, what client had what custom what the contract, uh, what the discount level was, and it all gets sorted out at the end of every work job, the work requested we call it, as well as we called it, um, and you know come up to the end of the, the end of the month and come up with an accurate an accurate invoice, but we kept on adding more and more stuff to it. Um, but it became unmanageable. Um, that's kind of just there, just the database, the data segments of the of the code. There's not, there's nothing, you know, no modules and no modules on, on that that re refer to actual procedural work. They're just the database queries, calling different different functions um, inside the database, and it's just it became impossible to manage. Um, and it just got too complex, and that's just a small seg segment of the um, of the, uh, the schema of the database. Um, and we just had to come up with something that was more manageable than that single customer, uh, the single uh, G CGI program, <clears throat> um, because uh, and also the CGI program was getting a bit it was getting a bit dated and. We're moving to Linux, and we wanted to have all the flexibility of Linux on the web server and get away from IIS. Um, so, you know, but the, the questions that we sort of really had to ask is do we have the, the time and budget to build a whole new database? And of course, the answer to that is no, uh, as well as the um, migrating the data um, and all the other things that go, because the database is not just about data. Um, I think I'm, I might be still coming up to that slide actually. Um, you know, what do we have? You know, can we migrate all that stuff? Well, of course we can, but really it's time. Can we, can we do it? And can we do it without interrupting the monthly accounting and billing process? And of course, you know, probably not. And you want to take the risk as a small business. Um, and I certainly didn't because I was, you know, become the CEO of that, of the, of ILA. Um, so, we figured there might be a way instead of m migrating everything to a different database, maybe we can use the existing database and do a different front end on it. So we came up with something called, well, we didn't come up with it. A lot of other talented people came up with Django, which is a, a, a Python based um, web framework, which I'm sure a lot of people have heard, heard of. Uh, a lot of people may not have heard of something called inspect DB. Um, and we'll show you shortly what what happens um, with when you run that. Um, and yeah, so that's the oh. so that's the uh, yeah. The, so we had this is the new version which we renamed Waves Wave Suite in honor of the previous company Ocean Wave Digital, um, and we built it on Django. We retained the the Firebird um, database backend. Um, we didn't really make very many changes. Um, active, we eventually built an Active Directory authentication, so then we didn't have to deal with multiple usernames in, in multiple systems. Um, and that was that was that was a real bonus. Um, and then we were able to link it because of the excellent the flexibility of all the Python. Um, applications and, and libraries that are available, we started linking in to different things like uh, PBX and Jabber and building presence in. So in the web page, you see here, you actually can't see the presence stuff, but down the uh, left-hand side, you'll see team status and and, uh, and you know, all sorts of things we're using. Um, IBM Director is a monitoring tool. Um, so we did this with just, and it opened up our ability to do it. The other thing, once again, is it retained the single source of truth, which is very important in, in data management. So I did that, and then 
how to use it. Well, as I said earlier, the, the problem with doing this presentation was that I was halfway through preparing it um, and I realised that my local system doesn't have it anymore because I'd switched to, to Tumbleweed from Leap. Now, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, I think uh, I think Firebird might need some help to package um, package their binaries in, into uh, into into Tumbleweed. Um, so anyone wants to stick their hand up and do that, that would be fantastic. Um, so if what we can do is we'll, we'll show you, you know, the, how we take the default database that is called employees as a demo database and turn it into a web a web webified system using django uh, which of course you know it, it, it then approves the, you know, how how this works um, and hopefully fingers crossed it's a live demo we'll uh, we'll see something that we'll, we will uh, see shortly Right, so let's see what, uh, let's, let's kill that. So I just have to get all the other systems out of the way. Um, there's all sorts of uh, Here we go. So there's all sorts of systems that you can you can use to to interrogate um, a a Firebird database, um, and one of them is is the Wave Suite system itself. And we're using uh, Flame Robin, which is one of the the things. Is a, this is a open source stuff, open source uh, system. Um, there's also seems to be having problems with connecting. Um, let's try something else. Um, there's there's um, there are commercial packages. Um, there's there's loads and loads of uh, third party customer customer based things and and admin based uh, tools. Let's see if this works. No, okay, can't show you that, but we can show you the original enterprise uh, sample um, database. I'm not sure if I can make that larger. Make it larger and make it useful. No. Um, so this is, there was a missing slide, which was like what a database is. Um, and what what a database is that's, that a lot of people don't see and don't realize because there's lots of complexity that's hidden by the the fantastic uh, front front ends that you get but you can do things like you can define except exceptions so you can say if something is done then run this code whatever it is and can we um just close that um functions you can have functions in there you can have um, generators which are basically things that generate a, a unique id um, um, for example, um, procedures. So all these can get called and actually can return their results as part of the the query that you make. Um, so they get they get mixed into the tables. Uh, there's you know a bunch of system tables that keep track of things. Um, procedures. Uh, and these are the 10 tables that, that this sample database has. And these are all linked together via various uh, joined joins and, and uh, what they call um, primary keys and, uh, and, and they're linked via these key characters. Okay, let's see, let's see if we can look at that. Probably not, I can't make it any larger. Um, but you get the idea. It's a lot of complexity that's built into any kind of database. Um, and I guess the, the point of this is that 
it's it's you can get all the information out in a consistent and and reliable way and that's that's one of the great things about using a database that it does it, you can you can rely on the fact that if, once it gets committed the data gets committed you can get it back in the same way and then link it into different in different ways to different information and see the information in a completely different light um so yeah um so that's that all there um i've already installed um i've already installed uh django already installed the database driver um and there's something called that i just ran that program let's see there's a whole lot of errors there let's try and get another one another window no. okay so there is something called inspect db now the thing is that the the in, there are two i'll, I'll do something out of order here. Um, so InspectDB is something that literally, having given it, um, so this is the Django settings file. The Django settings file, um, talk, you, know, you give it the database name, the path, which is the connection string. Um, the host name, which is also part of the connection string, you'll see that down there. The username, host, and where the where the database lives. Um, now you put that into Django and you fire it up, and it blows up if you try and do anything with it because it doesn't know the database. All it's done, all you've done, is given it a uh, a, um, a username and a password and an address, and it. Django goes away and goes, I don't understand any of this. And besides, I, I don't even, I, you're not fulfilling my requirements of having my set of user tables and, and the stuff that I need in that database. Um, so to do that, there's a simple command called migrate. And once you've migrated, it creates all these different tables and different different uh, sessions and uh, table tables and things like that and then you end up with this version as opposed to this version so it's made some changes um, most the most uh, the ob most obvious one is in the tables so here we've got 10 tables 10 tables but after you run the migrate, those 10 tables turn into 20 tables. And those 20 tables have got authentication things and, and permissioning and, and different group things. Um, Django login uh, log uh, service, um, something called migrations where you can actually migrate, you can add changes to tables and migrate them and then they become part of the, 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 uh, the whole database. Um, Etc. So it adds another ten tables. <clears throat> so having done that, having now you've seen that, um, how do we get? How do we? So I've created, you know, I've done migrate and has created those ten tables extra, but it still doesn't know about anything else. So the way to find out, give it the information as to what that is, is. And this is also so you can use it within your system um, and make modifications to it. Um, let's see. So, let's do it. So inspect DB goes into the database and comes back with a whole lot of garbage, but it's actually not garbage. Um, it's the Django is the Django and the Python models for every single table is discovered, and you can put that into your into your database as a, as a model.py, um, and you can you can modify it. You can do things like give give different uh, have different things show up instead of it being project debt budget, for example. There. 
you can turn it into something that's like project apartment budget and things like that. So it displays properly on the screen. Um, and having, I don't even think you need to do that actually, but having, I'll just run, do the run server command. Hopefully this isn't gonna blow up. And we get a little bit of a warning that something is not quite right. Um, before you, if you did a, a, before you ran the migrate, it'll come up with an error saying there's, there's a whole bunch of things that need to be, you need to uh, add in order to, to be able to connect. And now we get to that. So we now have got a system that is running off that database we've just shown. So let's get that right. Great, okay, this is where I Okay, there's probably something in the back end that I need to, I didn't do because I this was working on this uh, literally until about an hour and a half ago. But you will get, if you've ever had Django, use Django, maybe that'll do it. Um, it shouldn't work, but I might. No. All right. Um, but essentially, it you'll get something that looks um, very much like give you a quick He said. No. And uh, unfortunately, the demo has only gone so far, um, but it's. Uh, No, I don't have network connectivity to that site, but um, you get, you come up. Yeah, that's what you get. Um, so you'll come up with an admin, an admin field and you can change any data and anything. Um, and that's the way you get started with Django is using the admin tool and then you start writing your code. But in terms of doing something lightweight, I mean, Django is lightweight enough, even though it doesn't seem like it sometimes. Um, and it makes a, perf a perfect match in certain circumstances um, with uh, with fiber. Um, it's compact. It's it's lightweight. It, it's solid as a rock. It just you know, keeps on keeps on running where other things don't. Um, and you don't need to look after it. There's nothing to look after. It's it just sits there and runs. You don't have to you don't have to do anything to make sure things. You know, things that were working, you know, continue working and all that kind of stuff. It just sits there and in the background it does what it says it's going to do. <clears throat> and that's kind of it. If I move the pointer up here, go here. Um, and that's how we ended up making that wave suite. And so just in summary, um, Firebird integration with, <laughs> with Libre Office well, it was a good thing. I'm not sure what the future of it is because they had some problems with the client with the client side code, which probably, if anyone's interested, they should uh, take a look at doing that helping helping out there. Um, so it may or may not be on you already on your machine if you've got LibreOffice and you have 15.2. I'm not sure about three uh, 15.3 and Philippe. Um, it might still be there. Um, but the most important thing really is it's fast. It's fully featured. Um, it's a, the, the, it's a very small footprint. It's multi. It's, it handles multi users very well, 
um, and it's very light, lightweight on memory as well. So, um, and I guess the, the key takeaway is if someone is saying to you or something you're, you're deciding that you need a database to do something, or someone's telling you, oh, I want to do this, take a look at the, the use case, take a look at what really is needed, um, take a look at the way that you know, the, the size of the staff, uh, the IT staff, and see, you know, do they have a, a DB admin person there to, to do the work, um, which you kind of do need if um, if you're running anything larger than, than SQLite or, or Firebird. Um, and so keep an open, open mind. It could be, you know, the usual choice could be the wrong choice for the use case. Um, and I'll upload all this code um, and uh, up to that, link um, and there's a couple of pages there for for uh, you know more to find out more information um, and I think I'm kind of done thank you right on.